Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it around me and behind me, I talk about tropical houseplants. So today's video has been one that's been requested for quite a while. There's a lot of people that always ask the question, what's that big leaf plant in the background? I brought you all a bit closer so you can see this is the Philodendron Esmeral Dense. And today I'm going to be doing another plant review. So for those that are new, what happens during these plant reviews, and I'm looking down because I've got my notes, because it doesn't matter how many of these I've done, I've got a memory like a sieve. So <laughs> for these plant reviews, what I'll do is I'll give you a bit of background on the plant, tell you about how it came into my care. I'll usually put up a picture as well from my plant care app and I will caveat it again and say these are not Instagram worthy pictures. These are literally just pictures that I've snapped on my plant app just so I know the care that I need to give and it kind of gives me reminders. But more on that in a bit. Then I'll talk about the speed of growth. And again, you're looking at me, look down because I should remember this, but the speed of growth. And that's just basically how fast I have seen this plant grow in my care. Then I'll talk a bit more about ease of propagation. So how easy this plant has been to propagate. And then also I'll talk about availability at the time when I purchased this. And also again, another caveat here, I can only talk about prices and availability within Europe and the UK because I'm based in the UK. So that's what I can talk of. I don't know what it might be in your region. It might be drastically different. Also, timeframes are going to be massively important to all these reviews because if you're watching this review two, three years down the line, a lot of this might have changed. Some of it might have not. I don't know. But a lot of this might have changed. So check the date at the bottom of the video in the description, basically. Then I'll touch a bit on pests, pest pressures that I might have had with a specific plant. And then I'll round up with some final thoughts. What I've thought of the plant since it's been in my care. Would I purchase the plant knowing what I know now and if I didn't have it? And also give it a score out of 10. 10 being the best, zero being the worst, basically. But yeah, and I do encourage you all, like I have done with previous videos like this, if you've got this plant in your collection and you want to leave your own type of review, please do so down in the comments below because there's not a lot of places that have got a repository of reviews like this online, especially not for plants, I, I don't think, at least from what I've seen briefly by looking online. I haven't seen anybody else that's kind of doing something similar to this and I will start off with most of these reviews with the plants that I've had the longest. If I'm not mistaken, my Esmeral Dense I've had for probably coming up to two years now, and it's gone from strength to strength. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to do in terms of groundwork. Let's dive into the first topic. So the background on this plant, and it's an interesting one, and there's a bit of a story time here, essentially, where this plant was one of the few plants, ironically enough, a lot of people got into the hobby in the middle of the pandemic, during lockdowns and all of these things. I, ironically enough, only bought a handful of plants at the beginning of the pandemic. I bought a lot of plants just before the pandemic, which meant I was a bit broke at the beginning of lockdowns. That was fun. But yeah, so this was one of the plants that I did actually buy during lockdowns, or at least lockdowns here in the UK. This was almost two years ago now. <laughs> Time flies. Um, but this was a plant that I didn't know an awful lot about, and I'd seen some people, and I think it was a Patriciae, which is a similar long leaf philodendron that has got kind of ruffling going down. That's a bit narrower. Some people have asked me if I know if I've got the narrow form of the Esmeralda Dense, or if I've got the standard form. I didn't, when I was buying this, I didn't have anything like that in the description or the title of the eBay listing. I bought it on eBay. And I would assume that it's just the regular form. And to be fair, it, it, it does get quite wide. The largest leaf, which is at the top there. And let me see if I can tilt the camera up so you can see it. There you go. You might be able to see it, the leaf a bit better. It's a bit of a weird angle, but I might leave it like this because you're getting more of the plant in the shot this way as well. Obviously, this is not a plant that I can move to bring too, too close to you guys, because 
It's on a plant shelf and it's got, ironically enough, again, eagle eyed janky support sticks is what is holding this up. Velcro plant ties as well and a whole bunch of hope. <laughs> so this is not going anywhere anytime soon. I'm gonna have to start taking some propagation soon because I don't know if you can see this here. Yes, you can. There is a brand spanking new leaf that is coming through and that is after that mahusive one up the top there. And I'm expecting this to be even larger. So this has got slightly kind of maroon back leaves and obviously it comes in in a bit of a cigar form. And just to give you an idea of context, that is my head in relation to the leaf. And this isn't even the biggest leaf. The biggest leaf is the one up there and I'm assuming the new one might be even bigger still. But yeah, as I was saying, I got this on eBay. It was possibly one of the most expensive plant purchases that I have made. And that's not to worry or panic anybody because I don't spend an awful lot of money on plants. So, but yeah, it was, the leaves were probably the same as the one down here, maybe slightly smaller. I think it came with only two or three leaves and it had one, Essentially, it was a rooted cutting, but it had one long root. And I think that was pretty much it when I got it. So on that respect, I can talk about propagation because ironically enough, I have not cut this yet for propagation, but I can give you my experiences dealing with essentially what was a propagate to begin with. But um, yeah, it was a relatively expensive purchase. There's a very, uh, very English expression where if you're buying something and it makes you a bit nervous, it was a bit of a squeaky bum moment. And it was definitely a bit of a squeaky bum moment. This was purchased on eBay, but instead of usually on eBay, I will try to go towards the buy now because I'm, I don't trust myself with the bidding. So at least that way I know that I'm capping myself out. And this was bidding and I probably ended up paying a third more than I wanted to pay for it then. But for now, at least, I, I think it was worth it potentially. But it was a relatively large leaf as Merrill Dense. And, I, and this is the thing, a lot of questions that are coming up now, because I know some people that follow me are trying to find these, are finding much smaller, younger plants, basically. And they're wondering the, the leaf size when I first got it. And if you kind of look at my arm, it was probably about, uh, I don't know, I'm not good with kind of measurements on the fly like that, maybe. The leaves would have probably been about uh, 30, 40 centimeters. So they were relatively substantial leaves anyway. There wasn't that many of them. And that was my worry when I first got it. But it was a mature, more mature cutting that was taken from a mature plant as well. So I had that going for me. But yeah, that's how it came into my care. An eBay seller essentially. And uh, a very, very nerve wracking auction. And yeah, that was it. But let's move on to the next topic. Speed of growth for this one. And again, this is another question that has come up a lot, mainly from people that are looking to purchase this or are just about to purchase this, which I'm assuming is probably the majority of people that might be watching these YouTube videos, probably some existing owners as well. But yeah, um, in terms of speed of growth, and I can only talk about my experience and I should have caveated this at the beginning of the video, this is, always gonna be heavily biased towards it being my review, how I found it in my care, in my conditions. And just to kind of reiterate what I usually say in a lot of these reviews is I've moved three different houses in three different years, back to back essentially, with all of these plants, that was fun. Um, but this one has only moved twice basically, so it was in my previous property and this property. And Humidity level has always been quite decent wherever I've had it. So obviously it's in the conservatory now and it's usually 70 to 80% humidity. I don't think this plant needs that much humidity. I will say that. And in the previous property, it was maybe getting 60% humidity and it was still fine. Basically there was no stuck caterpillars. Granted now when they are getting a bit larger, the way that it comes out is a bit nerve wracking. And I always think that I maybe should help it out a bit, but it will always write itself out. Um, the one thing I will say, obviously, when you're getting very, very large leaves, you might see, and I've noticed this now, every time this plant is bringing out a new leaf, if it's just hardening off and everything else, the watering schedule is going to be okay and it's going to be about normal. 
but when it's bringing out a huge leaf like that, your time frame between waterings needs to get shorter because it is literally using an awful lot of water to generate that new leaf, especially at the size that it is, basically. So, yeah, in terms of speed of growth with this one, fast. And again, this has been my experience. It's possibly one of my fastest philodendron. Granted, it, again, it depends on how you look at it because because the leaves are so large and because this is such a mature plant, as with most mature plants, especially ones that have got big leaves, you might only be getting a new leaf once a month or once every two months. And I'll give you a benchmark, for instance, and because I know people want a bit of benchmark with this, with a standard golden pothos, I might be getting um, a leaf or two a month, basically. So this it depends on how you benchmark it, but because the leaves are so huge <laughs> and they take up so much space, it feels fast because one leaf is enough to create a, a beautiful kind of cascade of green ruffles basically falling down. And I know the ruffles aren't for everybody, but, and I wasn't too sure either when I was buying this plant, but I have definitely come around to this. But yeah, let's move on to the next topic, shall we? The next topic is ease of propagation. And as I've mentioned already, I've not taken a cutting yet of this to propagate. I will be taking a cutting. I've got one or two people that are very, very, very dear friends for a very long time, planty friends, who I know would care for this exceptionally well. And I want to kind of give it to them basically, rather than sell it essentially. But um, I can talk about my experiences when I essentially pretty much got a propagate. And I'm trying to remember now, if I had even had roots, I'll double check and I'll put it up here because I think now looking, thinking back on it, I think it literally just was a cutting. It didn't have roots. So in terms of rooting it out, relatively straightforward. I think this might have been one, it went into a Ziploc baggie, so a lot of humidity in there. Um, and I think it might have actually gone straight into a soil mix, into my Aroid soil mix. And it did really well. It did take a minute to kind of properly root out. It took about a couple of months, two or three months to properly kind of establish itself. And then I eventually bought it out of the, the baggie, basically, slowly into kind of standard humidity of the room that it was going to be in. But it really hasn't skipped a beat since then. It wasn't a particularly difficult plant to grow from a propagation. As I've mentioned, because I've not taken cuttings from my plant, I don't know how it is about when you release your apical dominance, and I've done another video and I'll link it up here. Obviously, when you cut a plant, you release what is called an apical dominance, and then you get buds that are forming along the stem that still exists on the mother plant. And that's when you get branching and you get a, a bushier plant. I don't know if I would necessarily need a bushier plant than this, because this is very much taking up a substantial space in this conservatory, basically. But so I can't talk on that aspect, but I can talk about what it's like dealing with a propagate of the plant, essentially. But yeah, that's, I think, what I wanted to say about propagation. Let's move on to the next topic. Now, availability. This is an interesting one. With availability for this plant, and again, I'll kind of refer back to Kaylee Ellen, which at least in the UK was one of the first sellers to get this. She was really disappointed at some point because she gave away some of the plants and she didn't keep one for herself and they were quite mature and she was saying there's a struggle now to get more mature specimens. I have very sneaky suspicion that I've, since I bought this from a UK seller, even if it was on eBay, a year or two after she would bought them in and their leaves were bigger than what she'd originally bought in, I would hazard a guess that at least the mother plant of this plant was probably one of the plants that Kaylee Ellen bought into the UK. So definitely a very, very cool plant. And I know Kaylee Ellen was trying to see if she could get a cutting from the mother plants. If she ever comes across this, A, I'm a big fan, B, hit me up. I would be more than happy to send you a cutting of this plant just so you can have one of your originals back essentially. But um, yeah, very, very interesting plant when it comes to availability because, and I think there's more people that are searching for it now. We're talking again about that supply and demand situation side of things. And again, something that Kaylee Ellen would mention on her channel, but I don't think there's a lot of people that are necessarily aware of this, that are not kind of more, slightly more serious collectors. 
Um, so you don't see it coming up very, very often. As I said, I think there's a few that have come into the market, at least here in the UK and the EU a bit more recently. They're much more juvenile plants. Um, but I got this, as I said, the, the, the cutting essentially, probably around the kind of low triple digits towards mid triple digits would have been roughly what it was selling at that point. I didn't get it for mid triple digits. I actually got it at a bit of a steal in comparison to that, but I did sp spend a considerable amount of money on this plant. And to be fair, you can kind of see why essentially. Um, but uh, yeah, in terms of availability back then and now, I think it's about the same as not as much as a bit more now, as I said, because they've got the younger plantlets that have come in. I think the prices haven't drastically fluctuated too, too much from a plant like this. And it might just be because not enough people know about it, not enough people are looking for it. It is also a plant that when it does get quite large, you need to give it space because just the leaves, insane. Because I know that a lot of people that are getting the Anthurium vicii, which have got the similar kind of ruffles and they've still got the, the kind of long leaves, unless you get a very mature version, it will take a while for it to get it here. And as I said, this wasn't as mature as it was. Now it was relatively mature. So this went quite quickly to a large size. Um, same thing that people would do with the Melanochrysum, the Philodendron Melanochrysum, or even the Anthurium Warakrianum, the Queen Anthurium, where they want the really long, large leaves. Similar, similar effect with this but less fussy because the leaves are actually quite leathery. They're not um, velvety. So if you've never seen one of these up close in person, they're not velvety. It might look a bit like that in the, um, in the camera, but you know, it's, it's definitely a plant that not an awful lot of people know about. There is still a bit of a price to it as, as far as I'm aware of right now. And I don't know whether or not that's gonna necessarily change. Pests is an interesting one with this one. I've had some mealybugs with this. People that have been around for a while will know that I'm constantly struggling with mealybugs in this conservatory because fun. <laughs> but not hugely so. It's not one that they're particularly attracted to. It does sometimes get extra floral nectaries and I've done another video and I'll put it up in the corner as well about what extra floral nectaries are and what they do. But also the one thing that I will say that I have had on occasion with this plant is spider mites, probably more so than other philodendrons. And it is because they get, I don't know if you can see these deeper grooves in the leaves, they get in those deeper grooves. It's very easy to see them and it does take a lot for them to decimate a size, this size of a plant. Basically, I don't know if you're getting more juvenile or if you've got a more juvenile form, what it's like, but that's been my experience so far with this. And yeah, I think those would be the main pests. I'm trying to think of anything else. Ah, one thing I will say, it's not technically a pest, but it's kind of closely related. When I first moved into this house and this conservatory, I thought the heating was okay in here overnight. Ah, big mistake. It dropped considerably at night time. I moved during the coldest time of the year in the middle of a pandemic as well. That was fun when people were still in lockdown. That was even more fun. Um, but yeah, this and my Calathea orbifolia, very, two very specific plants, got cold damage because the temperature dropped too much at night. So when everything else didn't. So to me, I wasn't surprised about the Calathea, to be fair. I'm surprised that some of my other more sensitive plants didn't get cold damage. This was surprising that this got cold damage. So I might kind of hazard a guess that this one is you really, really need to just be careful at night time, in the winter time, wherever you are, that you maybe don't let the temperature go too much below 15 degrees Celsius, I would say. I think during those night times, and it was only happened within a day or two, so it happened quite quickly. And what it presented as, if you can see the midrib, uh, the midrib of the leaf there, it had black lines and splotches. Initially, I thought it might've been root rot, but essentially it was some cold damage. And I kind of left it, let it kind of dry out uh, fully between waterings and obviously bumped up the heat in here. And it did take a minute, it took a couple of months to bounce back, but it didn't kill the plant and it kept going. So for me, 
that shows that this plant, even though it could be a bit sensitive to cold, is still a bit of a fighter, which is kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, that was what I wanted to say about pests and the little side note on cold damage. Going into final thoughts. I think by the sheer level of excitement when I talk about this plant, you might guess what my final thoughts would be on this. Let's, let's dive into it, shall we? <laughs> so let's start with the usual question. If I didn't have this plant, but I knew everything I knew now about the plant, would I buy it again? A hundred percent. Eyes blind, no problem whatsoever. I would definitely get this again. Now, I will caveat this slightly because I know that a lot of my followers have seen this plant, they're trying to get this plant. Uh, I've not heard a lot from a lot of them when they have got the plant. A couple of them that I have heard from said that it didn't do as well. I don't know if they bought it from sellers within their region or if they imported it from the Far East, for instance. I think the one that I know definitely struggled a bit might have come in from the Far East or um, South America. So there's always going to be a bit of a risk with plants that are coming in so far away from abroad with shipping stresses and all these things. And as I said, I still think this is a relatively ironclad plant, but there might be some sensitivity to it based on the fact that it got cold damage when nothing else did and as quickly as it did as well. So worth noting this, but as I said, this would be the one video that I truly, truly would like to hear if you've got this plant, what your experiences have been with it. If you've had a mature plant and you've kind of grown it to be even more mature, or if you've got a, quite a juvenile plant, how you're finding it so far. I don't know if people have had it for a long time, but I'd be very interested to hear your kind of experiences down in the comments below. And in terms of a score, <laughs> zero being the worst, 10 being the best, can you guess what I'm gonna give this? This would definitely be a, a nine or a 10 for me, basically. By far one of my favorites, and I know people will cringe at just that. What about the other plants you're telling that this is a favorite? I'm just, I've got a lot of favorites, it's fine. <laughs> Equal opportunity favorites in this place. <laughs> but um, definitely, definitely one that I truly enjoy having in my collection. And I would 100% buy this again if I came across it. Not now, I've got one, one is enough. I'm not gonna be greedy. I know there's not that many of them going around and I definitely know there's not that many mature ones going around. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.